Hey y'all, welcome back to my creative space. It's Nicole with Mainline Craft Company where we make wreaths and crafts and teach you how to make them. In the shop today, I'm going to show you how to make this fun house divided baseball deco mesh wreath using the ruffle technique. So grab a cup of coffee, get cozy, and let's get started. So this wreath that we're about to make is a custom order and my customer asked for a Los Angeles Dodgers versus the San Francisco Giants wreath and on the table are all the supplies that we're going to need to get started. So we have miniature baseballs, a license plate, a wire wreath frame with two different color chenille stems, three different colors of deco mesh, and for the Dodger side we have four different patterns of wired ribbon and I'm really loving that baseball ribbon. For the giant side we also have four different colors and patterns of wired ribbon. One thing to remember with this wreath um, or for any house divided wreath you can certainly mix it up and advertise that you do any sport. It could be baseball, football, it could be college teams, you know, whatever whatever you'd like to do, I think it's it's super versatile. The first thing that we're going to do is take the Dollar Tree wire wreath frame, which measures 14 inches in diameter, and we're going to attach the chenille stems, one color for each team. To see how I did this, please watch my video how to make a poof wreath with ruffles. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our deco mesh and I'm using two colors for each side. I'm using a white. This is from Hobby Lobby and it measures 10 inches in diameter by 30 feet. And the second color is this royal blue that I also picked up from Hobby Lobby and it measures 10 inches in width. And I apologize, I said the white was 10 inches in diameter. It's 10 inches wide. I'm going to take my rotary cutter and I'm going to use this to cut the deco mesh and it's going to make this process so much faster. To make this process a little quicker, I stack the deco mesh on top of each other. We're going to cut 15 inch lengths and we want 8 cuts. So that's 16 pieces of deco mesh for each team. The next thing is we're going to take the black deco mesh, which I found at Michael's, and we're going to do the same thing on this side. 15 inch lengths, 8 cuts, so that gives us 16 pieces of mesh. And you'll notice that the black mesh is a little longer, and I actually kind of like how it hangs over the white, but you'll see in a second what it'll look like. Take your wreath frame and open up all the chenille ties. Grab your first set of deco mesh and you're going to alternate between the white and the blue on the top. So you're going to hold it in the middle and you're going to scrunch it up the center creating a ruffle. So as you add each ruffle to the chenille stem, go ahead and fluff it out to make it look full. So you're going to do this for each chenille stem. This is probably one of the easiest uh, techniques that I've learned and that I like to teach. So you're going to do the same thing with the giant side. And actually what I decided to do was add the white to the top only because I can still see the black on the sides and I can see the black coming through the white a little bit. If I put the black on the top, it doesn't show, uh, the white won't show through. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to receive alerts the next time we upload a new video. Also, any tools or supplies used for this tutorial will be linked in the description below.
Once all the deco mesh has been added, go ahead and give it a good fluff because next comes the ribbon. So the ribbon is wired. It's two and a half inches in width and I cut 14 inch lengths. I went ahead and also dovetailed the end. So I paired the baseball stitching with the burlap polka dot and the gray and white with the blue and white polka dot. So what you're going to do is take one, place it on top of the other, fold it in half to find the center, scrunch the middle, and you're going to untwist the chenille stem, stick the ribbon in there, and give it a good few twists. Then you're going to open up the ribbon to create an X. And you're going to alternate and do this all the way around the wreath. I like to cut the ribbon into 14 inch lengths because it also gives it some added fullness. So now on the giant side, I've paired the black and orange chevron with the burlap ribbon and the orange and white polka dot with the black and white ribbon. And again, all the ribbon is wired. It's two and a half inches in width. Cut into 14 inch lengths and the edges have also been dovetailed. Dovetailing the ends is not uh, something that you have to do. I like to do it because it, it gives it a finished look. So this is what we have so far and this is what the wreath looks like once we've added in all the ribbon. Full and fluffy, colorful, I just love how it looks so far. Once you're done adding the ribbon, we're going to go ahead and add the sign. So you want to get uh, two colors of chenille stems for each team. You want to try to get as close to the color of the license plate as possible so it kind of blends in when you add the sign. So you're going to take the chenille stems, you're going to stick it through the hole, and you're going to give it a few twists on the back side to make it tight. And you're going to do this for all four holes. So once you're done tying all four chenille stems, go ahead and find the center of your wreath and lay your license plate down. You want to make sure that the license plate aligns with the correct side for each team. You're going to take each of the chenille stems and you're going to stick them through the center of the wreath where the hole is. And you're going to just lay the license plate down so that it sits on top of the mesh. Just be sure not to push the license plate too far in because you still want to be able to read and see the sign. So you're going to place the license plate on top of the mesh and you're going to fix your ribbon so that the ribbon isn't smashed underneath the sign. Once you've positioned your license plate in the center of the wreath, go ahead and flip your wreath over and you're going to look for the chenille stems that are sticking through the center of the back side of the wreath. Go ahead and take your chenille stems and you're going to secure the sign to the wire wreath by twisting the chenille stems around the wire frame. You want to tie it snug enough so that the sign is secure and not loose but not too tight to where it pulls the sign through the wreath and to where you're not able to read it. Go ahead and do this for all four chenille stems. Once you've tied each of the chenille stems a couple times, go ahead and flip your wreath back over to the front just to make sure that you have your sign in the center. If you're happy with it, go ahead and flip it back over to the back side and finish securing the chenille stems to the wreath frame.
As long as you have the wreath flipped over on the back side, go ahead and clean up the back by trimming off any loose mesh that has been frayed. Flip your wreath back over to the front and go ahead and fluff out your ribbon and reposition your ribbon however you like. Go ahead and clean up the front also by trimming off any loose pieces of mesh that you find. Once you're done fluffing all the ribbon, we're going to go ahead and add the miniature baseballs. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just placing them in the spots that I think I like or where I would like them. I originally started out with six baseballs, um, but I went ahead and added two more for a total of eight. So I placed four around the outer ring, alternating each ribbon spot, and four on the inner ring, and they ended up being at the corner of the license plate. Once I was happy with the placement of the baseballs, I went ahead and hot glued each one of them in place. And now this is what the wreath looks like once we've added in all the miniature baseballs. I love how it looks. I think it's cute to add the miniature baseballs to it since it is a baseball themed wreath. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a hook on the back side of the wreath to hang it up. So find the center of where you'd like to start. Take a chenille stem, placing one end on either side of the frame. You're going to give it a twist in front of the loop, being sure to leave enough of the loop to go around a hanger. You're going to take each end of the chenille stem and twist it once around the frame. Give it a twist in front of the loop and then take the rest of the ends and you're going to wrap it around the wreath frame. One thing about this hook on the back side with the chenille stem is it gives it enough stability um, and security for anywhere you'd like to hang it. Once your hook is in place, go ahead and flip your wreath over to the front, give it a good look and make some last minute touches, fluff out the ribbons and clip off any loose mesh that you see. And here is the finished product. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell to receive alerts the next time we upload a new video. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I hope you have a blessed day.